Hi, my name's Dean. I'm here with Ben today, and we're here to introduce the Alaris Critical Care Pump. So the safety checks for this pump, the CC, for the mnemonic chips. Is the device clean? Is it on its holder? So it should be attached to a drip stand to ensure that it's secure. Is the device intact? Is there any visible damage? Are there any parts missing? Does the device have power? So this device runs on a battery, but when at the patient bedside, it should be plugged in at all times, only on the battery for transfer. And then finally, is it in service? It's the on-off button. The green button here is to start your infusion, and when the light is lit, the infusion is running. The amber button is for stop infusion. You've got a series of soft keys on the bottom here. Now these will change depending on what function you're in. And then you've got some more functions over here. Now because the pump isn't running, this button here becomes the purge key as opposed to the bolus key. And you'd use this to purge the giving set to the end to prepare for infusion and to remove mechanical slag. The next button here is to silence your alarms. And this button here is actually a menu button and allows you to look at the log of the machine. And the final button here is the level button. Now this is important as this sets the pressure that the pump is going to run at. And we'll cover that when you've started the infusion. So first of all, you must ensure that you're using a Lurlock syringe. So that's a screw type adapter. These devices are only licensed for Lurlock. Secondly, you need a different giving set to that used on the adult pumps. You must have the pressure disc. Dean, as you push the water through, you just need to ensure that you're not getting any air trapped in the pressure disc. And to, to get rid of this, you can just massage the air bubble away. So now you're ready to pop your infusion into the pump. So if you just hold that in, simply pull the driver backwards and open the clamp and pop the syringe into the clamp and bring the driver down to the end. The next thing you should do is make sure that you've slotted the pressure disc in to the pressure sensor at the side. So you're now ready to turn the pump on. So Dean, I want you to use this button here, which is the power on off, if you just press that down. And the device is now running through its safety checks and you'll see on the screen that it is a hospital pump, so we can use it in this department. It's now asking you, would you like to clear the setup? Yes, you would. So yes, for clear the setup. The next thing it's asking you is, have I got the right syringe? So this is a BD plastic pack syringe, 50 mils, so you can confirm that that is correct. If this wasn't correct, I'll just show you. You can click on type, you could have a Taruno, or a BD plastic pack. So if you confirm now, it's very important that you choose the correct manufacturers. The diameters of these syringes do vary and that would alter your infusion rate. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. So now you're ready. You've got your infusion primed to the end of the giving set and you need to use the soft keys along the bottom here to decide on your rate and your volume to be infused. Now these soft keys, they will change depending what mode you're in. Okay. So the first thing I'd like you to do is set how many mils per hour you'd like this to run. So if you use the, the one up key or the two up key, it gives you different speeds. Okay. It's very similar to the adult pump. I'm gonna go for a 10 mil per hour infusion. Yep. So I'm gonna use the two up key. So if you hold that, that quickly. and it's gonna take you to 10. That's excellent. Now, do you want this as a continuous infusion or do you want this to stop every hour? or after a certain volume. I think I'll go for a continuous infusion. Yeah. And absolutely, with inotropes, you don't want any break in their infusion. So in that case, you won't be setting your volume to be infused, and quite simply, the pump will warn you when it's near the end of the fluid. So we're now set to run at 10 mils per hour, and the device is on hold. If you look at the volume key here, what the volume key here does is it tells you how much fluid you've given so far. So in a couple of hours' time, that will tell you you've given 20 mils. Volume to be infused, we said we don't require. 
However, if you did require it, you just go up and down on these soft keys here to set your volume to infuse. You'll then have the option of the infusion stopping or going into a keep vein open mode. Have you used the keep vein open mode before at all? Yes. Yeah. So what that does is just keep a trickle going through the cannula, just enough to prevent it from, from clotting and keeping your line patent. So that's the soft keys along the bottom. The other soft keys along the side here perform some other functions. Have you come across this key before? I believe that's the bolus key, isn't it? Absolutely. So you're almost right there, Dean. However, at the moment, we're amber, so the infusion is not running. So if you were to press this now, this is not going to add to your volume infused, but what it's going to do is it's going to purge the line. So you must only use it this way as a purge when you're not connected to the patient because it will not be added to the volume. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, to purge. It's going to purge at 200 mils per hour. If you just press and hold on the purge button, and if you just show for the camera, what we're waiting for is for a bubble to come at the end of the, the line. So when I say a bubble, I mean a a droplet of fluid. And there it is. Yeah. Have you got any idea why we do that before we're connected to the patient? I'd be keen to uh, get all the air out of the line and to ensure that the, the liquid that we're infusing is to the tip of the line so we're not infusing air into the vein. Absolutely, that is important. And the other thing that's important is this driver here has what's called mechanical slack. Now if you don't do this check before you connect to the patient, it could be that this is 10 minutes of mecha mechanical slack until your patient receives any fluid. Do you remember how we silence that alarm initially? I think we said best practice is we'll look at the colour um, on the corner and we'll um, put the silence alarm yeah. button. We'll then read the instructions on the screen which is alerting for a line occlusion. And Absolutely. We'll acknowledge that with the council. That's great. So at the moment what you need to be aware of is a red is a critical alarm. This means your infusion is no longer running, and this is important with your inotropic support. So the pump is now on hold, and that's repeated up there. So what did it say on the screen before you acknowledged it? It said there was a line occlusion. Okay, so what I would want you to do is consider checking the patient, checking your equipment. Is the patient cannula set clamped? The, you, yep. the cannulation looks fine. And the cannula was flushing well when you connected it to the patient. Is the line kinked? Uh, so the line looks reasonably straight. Absolutely. Is the line clamped? Ah, it seem like we've spotted the problem. It looks like the line has been clamped. That's correct. So to resolve this, we now need to be very careful. What we need to do is make sure that you don't give your patient an extra dose of your inotropes because at the moment it's under pressure from here to here. If I were to release this now, I'll get a surge of fluid. A small amount in this case, but more if I was pumping at a higher rate. What we need to be aware of with the pump is it has something called back off. So when it occluded, the driver pulled back slightly. However, you can still get a bolus of the drug. What you can do to release this is just to release the clamp. And then we can re-engage the clamp confirm that. We can now reconnect and unclamp. 